Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction horror film, Dark Light. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with single mother Annie and her daughter Emily moving into an old farmhouse. Annie inherited the farmhouse from her mother after she committed suicide. Consequently, Annie needs a new place to start a new life after getting a divorce from her ex-husband, Paul. Annie tours Emily inside to show her new bedroom and allows her to explore the house to get familiar with the new place. Outside, Emily sees the vast land of cornfields. While Emily gazes outside her window, her bedroom door opens spontaneously. When she goes out to the corridor in Annie's bedroom to check, there's no one else besides her. On the first night in the farmhouse, Annie hears strange noises, such as scratching and groaning behind the walls. She investigates in the middle of the night to search for the origin of the sound, but nothing comes to light. Suddenly, the main door opens by itself, and the elevator in the kitchen opens on its own. Annie thinks someone's messing with her, but she's alone beside her daughter, who's asleep. The following day, Paul visits Emily to give her a cow plushie. He lets her play with the toy, then talks with Annie about moving back into the farmhouse. Paul apologizes to Annie because she's back in the house of her dead mother. Upon hearing his apology, Annie feels Paul is insincere after cheating on her while her mother was dying. Paul immediately counters that he looked for another woman because Annie constantly had nervous breakdowns before. Annie scoffs at Paul's reply and argues that he's just making excuses for his idiocy. Either way, Annie only wants to begin a new chapter with Emily alone. On the second night in the farmhouse, Annie and Emily play in the cornfield when an unexpected event happens. Emily disappears during the game, and numerous flashlights surround Annie out of nowhere. When the lights finally fade into nothingness, Annie finally sees Emily, but she's standing on the rooftop this time. The following day, Annie calls the sheriff to report what happened to Emily last night. The sheriff asks multiple questions to clarify if the house was locked tight, and Annie answers them honestly, but she doubts the sheriff even cares in the first place. Annie asks the sheriff where the lights came from and how her daughter reached the roof because when they ask Emily if she remembers anything, she says she doesn't. The sheriff eventually leaves, leaving Annie with a deep concern for Emily. So she goes outside the cornfield to examine the field, but it's simply quiet and peaceful. On the third night in the farmhouse, Annie quenches her thirst for answers by searching online. She stumbles upon a theory site managed by a conspiracy theorist. Annie watches a video explaining the existence of indigenous human-like races living secretly among the humans. At the end of the video, Annie jots down the theorist's contact details in case things in the farmhouse escalate into worse scenarios. Lights suddenly appear in the cornfield, so Annie equips herself with a knife to defend herself and Emily from whoever is outside. Annie tells Emily to hide in her room while she confronts the cause of the lights outside. She shouts at them to leave them alone, which works quickly because the lights disappear soon after. Annie is about to return home when she notices a light from her bedroom staring down at her. Annie rushes upstairs because the light is traveling towards Emily's room. Strangely, upon reaching the second floor, Annie sees Emily safe and well. The following day, Annie calls the sheriff and reports last night's event. The sheriff pretends to care about Annie's problem, but in reality, she's just tolerating her. The sheriff leaves the farmhouse while Paul revisits the farmhouse. Annie recounts everything to her ex-husband since his last visit. However, Paul assumes Annie is simply having another nervous breakdown, which was the same reason that led Annie's mother to commit suicide. It appears these unknown creatures who are pestering Annie and Emily are the same creatures driving Annie's mother to become insane. Regardless, Paul thinks Annie's moving back into the farmhouse is a bad idea. During their chat, Emily enters the room with a bloody nose. Paul quickly approaches Emily and cleans her nose. Afterward, Paul and Annie put Emily to bed for rest. He promises Emily he'll return tomorrow so he can guard her. After Paul's visit, Annie installs a mani cam in Emily's room so she can track Emily. On the fourth night in the farmhouse, the lights inside the farmhouse blink rapidly. In the nanny cam, Annie sees that Emily is not in her room. Annie immediately gets out of bed to look for Emily. But the moment she opens the door, Emily stands before her. Emily says she wants to sleep next to Annie because she's scared. Annie gladly obliges to her wish, so they sleep on the same bed. Shortly after, the lights flicker again, which startles Annie from slumber. To be sure, Annie examines the entire house to see if someone's trespassing, but there's no trespass. Annie then cools her face with a splash of water in the bathroom, when suddenly a tall figure walks past the corridor and enters her bedroom. Annie catches a glimpse of the tall figure and chases after it. However, her bedroom door shuts in front of her face, locking Emily inside with whatever the creature is. Behind the door, the lights blink rapidly, and Annie continuously slams the door, screaming Emily's name. The door finally opens, but Emily is gone. 
Annie searches the whole house, but Emily is still missing. So she calls the sheriff for help in searching for Emily. The sheriff quickly responds to Annie's plea and drives to the farmhouse. En route, the sheriff almost runs over Emily, who's standing in the middle of the field. The sheriff stops the car and delivers Emily back home. However, Emily says she doesn't want to go back. The sheriff reckons Annie might be hurting her. Nevertheless, the sheriff brings Emily back to Annie. Annie welcomes Emily into her arms, while the sheriff confronts Annie about her abusive behavior. Annie defends herself and explains that Emily is simply going through a transitional phase since they recently moved into a new house and are away from her father, Paul. In the end, Annie assures the sheriff that Emily will be okay eventually. On the fifth night in the farmhouse, the tangled mysteries begin to unravel. At night, Emily hears a strange noise, so she hides in the elevator. Annie eventually finds her and grabs her hand, but a figure emerges from the main door. Out of adrenaline, Annie shoots the figure, but when she recognizes who it is, it's just Paul coming to visit, but now wounded on the floor. Suddenly, the lights blink again in the elevator, and Emily happens to be inside the lift again. The creature that kept Annie awake for days finally appears before them. It has only one eye that glows with light. Annie quickly fires the creature's eye, inflicting pain on it. The creature shrieks and wraps itself around Emily. The elevator door shuts, and Annie rushes to the basement to save Emily. However, upon arriving in the basement, the only thing left in the elevator is Emily's cow plushie. Shortly after, the sheriff and the deputy arrive at the farmhouse to carry Paul into an ambulance and to put Annie into police custody for interrogation. The sheriff interrogates Annie about the strange occurrence in the farmhouse. Annie answers that an unknown creature abducted Emily and attacked her. However, the sheriff suspects Annie is fabricating a story to cover up the abuse she has inflicted on her daughter. In the end, the sheriff charges Annie with the murder of her own child. Then they take Annie's mugshot and afterward transfer her to a jail in another state. The sheriff put Annie in a police truck along with another criminal. The truck travels in the pouring rain. The police driver comments that the storm is too strong. As the truck approaches the bridge, a cow blocks the road. The police driver is forced to evade and swerve the vehicle to the side of the road. Since the road is slippery, the truck continues to move outside the bridge and crashes down the embankment. The three cops and the other criminal die in the crash, but Annie miraculously survives. The following day, the sheriff, the deputy, and their backup investigate the crash site from last night. They find all the bodies during their investigation, except Annie's. The deputy assumes Annie's body must have drowned during the storm, but the sheriff still wants to cover more ground to be sure. Meanwhile, Annie returns to the farmhouse to gather her emergency shotgun and money beneath the floor. Then, she visits the conspiracy theorist to get help with saving her daughter. Annie finally meets the theorist, and they discuss the existence of the unknown creature. He calls the unknown creature Dark Light and then draws a quick sketch of its appearance. Annie describes the creature as having no face, but only an eye that lights up. Suddenly, Annie collapses on the couch due to an unexpected nosebleed. While unconscious, she dreams about her daughter lying inside a cave. Eventually, Annie wakes up, and the theorist warns that they need to act fast. Once again, he presents his quick sketch of a dark light, and explains that it's a form of humanoid that mainly targets children. These dark lights harvest children's inner light because it's a portion of food necessary for the survival of their species. When Annie says she wants to kill the creature, the theorist pretends to agree to help her. He first brings Annie to a room filled with posters of missing children and then locks her there. He apologizes to Annie and explains he can't kill the creatures because it's an opportunity to finally show the world that the dark lights are real. Annie begs to let her out, but the theorist leaves her alone and travels to the farmhouse. He arrives at the farmhouse with a gun in hand. Upon entering the main door, the creature had already attacked his face. Terrified, he drives to run his smelly ass away as fast as he can. But the creature catches up to him and electrocutes his body and butt. The theorist is forced to crash his car into a tree to stun the creature. He runs to the train station and hides on one of the trains. However, the creature locates him and absorbs the life out of him. After 20 minutes, the deputy and the sheriff arrive at the train station to investigate the theorist's gruesome death. The sheriff assumes an animal attacked the theorist, but the deputy counters that no animal could do such damage. Shortly after, the sheriff and the deputy visit the theorist's house for an investigation. Annie hears them arrive, so she hides behind the closet to prevent being caught. The sheriff enters her hideout and examines the area when Annie suddenly makes a faint noise because her nose starts bleeding again. The sheriff hears the sound that Annie made, so she approaches Annie's hiding spot and sees the fresh blood. Fortunately, the deputy beckons the sheriff to look at the surveillance footage he found. The sheriff and the deputy watch the footage and see that Annie is alive and well, having met the theorist before his death. 
While they are busy with the footage, Annie sneaks out of the house and returns to the farmhouse. The sheriff realizes that Annie might be back in the farmhouse, which is correct. Annie is finally back at the farmhouse. She carries a shotgun and a gas can into the elevator when footsteps suddenly emerge from the second floor. Annie immediately aims for the shotgun and climbs to the second floor. The creature stands in the bathroom, but it disappears right after Annie turns to the bathroom. Since she finds no one around, Annie runs back down the first floor. But after hearing someone trying to open the main door, she quickly hides in the living room. The figure enters the house, revealing Paul, who comes to visit them. He hears the elevator whirring and going down, so he goes past the stairs, completely missing any camouflaging on the wall. Then he arrives in the basement and finds the elevator empty. He's about to leave when the elevator opens for him, and he naively enters. His flashlight blinks rapidly, meaning the creature is with him in the elevator. Paul turns around and sees the creature looming over him. Meanwhile, Annie realizes it's only Paul and follows him to the basement, but she's too late because the creature already took him. The lights in the basement and elevator flicker again, implying the creature is around somewhere. Annie turns to the side and sees the creature charging at her. She fires her shotgun and runs to the stairs. She closes the door and reloads the shotgun. Then she opens the basement door to shoot it again, but it has already disappeared. Just then, the sheriff catches Annie in the farmhouse. She doesn't listen to Annie's warning and instead commands her to drop the gun. The sheriff is oblivious because the creature emerges from her behind and quickly kills her by absorbing the life out of her. Unlike the sheriff, Annie fights the creature by stabbing it in the chest with the lamp. The turned-on bulb electrocutes and temporarily stuns the creature, but it quickly recovers and hides again. Just then, Annie realizes the creature's weakness, so she grabs a taser for the next one-on-one -on -one battle with the creature. Annie then rushes to the elevator and opens its trapdoor on the floor, revealing the dark light's massive cave den. Annie sees a dead bony kid submerged in the water. At the end of the cave, she finds Paul unconscious. She wakes him up so they can search for their daughter together. After searching the cave, Annie and Paul find Emily being extracted by the creature. Suddenly, Paul apologizes to Annie for the last time before luring the creature away from Emily so Annie can save their daughter. While Paul lures the creature away from Emily, Annie wakes her up and brings her to safety. The movie ends with Annie, Emily, and Paul merely escaping the den. However, the creature catches Paul and kills him instantly. The two are forced to escape without him. They reach the ground floor and Annie pours out gas everywhere. They're nearly finished when the creature suddenly grabs Annie's leg and straddles her to absorb the light from her. Fortunately, Annie uses the taser on the creature to stun it. The creature collapses and Annie sets the farmhouse on fire along with the creature. Annie and Emily escape through the sheriff's police car while the farmhouse and the den underneath burn. Annie thinks she has solved the problem, but she forgets that there's more than one creature or dark light lingering around the farmhouse. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.